Hello, this is Jane Pfeffer. Uh, I am a member of Urban Harvest and um, we have a program for you today uh, that is dealing with uh, planting sweet potatoes. Uh, I have had a fair amount of experience with that as a master gardener and as a member of Urban Harvest. So uh, let's do it. Uh, Urban Harvest, there are some places you can go to get information from Urban Harvest and they're on your screen right now. Urban Harvest is a 501c3 nonprofit organization uh, and its main purpose in life is to help you grow wonderful food uh, by having gardening classes and a lot of youth education. Sweet potatoes require a little bit of different um, talking about uh, when it comes to planting. Uh, you don't plant seeds uh, and uh, you have to treat the gardening bed a little differently. But first let's talk about a little bit about why you would want to plant sweet potatoes. Uh, it is in our area an excellent summer crop, uh, mainly because it requires so little care when most people don't really want to be out there doing anything. Um, they love our hot temperatures and the humidity that we have. And it's a great cover crop because it produces great long vines, uh, which will cover the bed and uh, prevent the weeds from, from taking over the garden. <clears throat> the timing is wonderful for schools because you can plant them in early in the spring, uh, right about now. In the next week or so, we'll start planting sweet potatoes. Uh, and they grow uh, for about 90 to 100 days. And uh, this means that when school starts again, and we hope it will, in the fall, uh, they're ready to be picked. And uh, the harvesting is one of the most fun times in the garden uh, for school and even in your own backyard. <clears throat> Plus the fact that they are delicious. Most people like them pretty well. Uh, and they are nutritious. They're very good for you. They are high in fiber carbohydrates. Um, the oranger they are, and the more vitamin A they contain. And they actually have more than carrots and spinach and red peppers, which we often <clears throat> say you should eat for the vitamin A. They're high in carotene. They are actually the, one of the top 10 weighted health foods in many vegetable studies that have been made. The leaves can actually be harvested several times as a summer green. Uh, again, greens don't grow that well in the summer, so this is another good, good reason for having sweet potatoes around. However, there's another summer crop which also will give you leaves that are very much like the sweet potato leaves. Uh, it's called the sweet potato spinach. It does not form a, an edible tuber. It does form a tuber. It's white instead in most cases. Uh, its leaves are really a good summer green. Uh, and harvesting sweet potato leaves, while it's a good thing you can do if you don't have this plant, uh, it does harm the uh, yield and the quality of the potatoes that are formed. So uh, this is a good thing to do. Now they aren't easy to find. Uh, very few nurseries handle them. You usually have to find a friend who's growing it and get a cutting. <clears throat> Sweet potatoes are a member of the morning glory family, Ipomia patatas, uh, and you plant them May through July. So you have a fairly long window uh, that you can use for planting if you don't get around to it because of things that are happening in your life. Uh, they take 90 to 100 days, most of them 90 to 120, some of the longer ones. They require moderate fertility. Uh, doesn't mean it means you don't have to go out and fertilize them every couple of weeks like you do with some of the summer crops. Uh, and you can usually start harvesting uh, really within uh, uh, maybe two and a half months. You can go out there and dig around and find some good sized sweet potatoes. And if you can remove them carefully and let everything else keep growing. Uh, so they're really fun. And this is uh, a there is, in this slide, there is a uh, harvest from one of the beds uh, in, in my life. 
you do not plant seeds, as I mentioned before. <clears throat> you actually grow what are called slips. The slips are actually vines that grow out of the eyes of the sweet potato. Uh, and you can actually grow your own from last year's crop if you have any of them still around. <clears throat> you cannot grow them from a sweet potato from the grocery store, probably, <clears throat> because they have been treated so that they won't do that. If you can get sweet potatoes from the farmer's market, they'll work. The, the farmers, people who grow them here locally do not treat them uh, for that purpose. In order to grow your own, you need warm and moist conditions uh, and the eyes will start to grow. And I think you've probably seen this under your sink if you stored your sweet potatoes under there, if you bought one at the farmer's market <clears throat> and you might have even gotten one at the grocery store that started growing a vine right under your under your sink. Uh, you detach these vines and then you put them in water and they will grow roots and that's what you plant. Those are called slips. You can also buy them online. There is a gentleman in Kentucky who calls himself the Tater Man uh, and I've bought them from him online uh, for the last 15 years. <clears throat> you can also get them a lot of the online uh, seed companies. Wheelheightseed.com is one of those but there are many others. And uh, often, locally, you can buy them at nursery or feed stores here in Houston. Some of the varieties that you might run into would be, the Jewel is one that you probably will find at the grocery store <clears throat> because they are the ones uh, that, that are used mostly by the growers in this country. Uh, it's often called a yam because it is very sweet and moist, which yams are. They are, however, a totally different animal. Uh, it's a different variety. <clears throat> it's a different family altogether. Beauregard is one that is very nice. It produces very well here. It has a nice rosy skin and it's a vine type. There are two types. Uh, Georgia Jet is also a vine type. Puerto Rico, uh, which is rated very high in flavor, is very good for small spaces because it is a bush type. It doesn't form the big long vines. Uh, that, that sometimes are a bit of a problem later on in the summer. <clears throat> Nancy Hall is good too, and also Centennial, uh, both of which are vine types. Uh, some of them are, have been rated, uh, for example, the Georgia Jet, while it, it's, a, it's a quicker sweet potato or it'll give you edible sizes uh, quicker, doesn't, has not been rated for very good taste. I mean, it's tasty, it's just not one of the best. So those are some of the choices. There are others, actually. Um, the soil is very important uh, for the sweet potatoes. It has to be deep. Uh, the, uh, the roots actu actually need room to grow. Thus, the mounding, which we're going to be talking about in a minute. <clears throat> the soil needs to be sandy. You want a lot of compost in there to help hold the moisture but you want it also to be well drained. So it, that's why you mound it up and give the, uh, give the water some place to go. And moderate fertility, uh, and sweet potatoes do not like salty or acidic soils. <clears throat> One of the problem with the fertility is if you get it too fertile, if you put too much fertilizer on there, you get a lot of vine and not a lot of roots. And of course the sweet potato is the root. This is one of the beds in a garden that I managed for about nine years. Uh, and it has an automatic watering system, but that's not important for sweet potatoes necessarily. But to prepare the bed, you would add fertilizer and some compost to that soil. And then you're gonna mound up the soil in the center of the bed by just taking a shovel and taking that soil that's right next to the uh, outside of the bed and mound it up in the center. And if you can get up to six or eight inches, that's really what you need. If you can get it higher, that's even better. Uh, then you're going to moisten it thoroughly. <clears throat> and uh, the beds that I've shown you, that bed is 24 feet by four feet, <clears throat> which is a lot more than you need to grow sweet potatoes for your family. The size can actually be as small as two foot by four feet. Uh, you can still get quite a few, um, you can, you you will see that the uh, sweet potatoes are planted nine inches to 12 inches apart. So you can get several slips into that 
and you get a lot of sweet potatoes out of one slit. You can also plant them in round containers. If you've got a whiskey barrel, uh, you need something pretty big though because uh, the sweet potatoes do need room to grow. Depth is important. Uh, the storage roots, which is what you're trying to grow, must have room to form. <clears throat> when you plant them, you can use something called a dibble, uh, which is really just a fat pointed stick, or you can use a hand trowel. Uh, you cannot just take the slip and push it down into the ground because it's very fragile and what will happen is they will break. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so you don't wanna do that. What you're gonna do is, is make a hole and then the slip should have good roots when you put them down in there. And you're gonna to wanna to bury three to four inches with two or more nodes underground. And of course the nodes are the places where the, uh, where the leaves come out of the main stem. And you will want to plant them nine to 12 inches apart on top of that mound, firm the soil around the stem, uh, making sure that it's making good contact with the soil. Uh, this shows you some students who are uh, putting those slips into the ground. You'll notice the roots on the, stand, on the slips and also they have nice leaves and you're going to put those down carefully into that hole and then firm the soil around, around the slips. In the garden that I tended, this is not absolutely necessary, but it really does help. If you surround the uh, sweet potato slips, you'll notice that there are two at each spot there, and that happens to be where the emitters, where the water comes out of the irrigation system. <clears throat> and they're about, they're about eight inches apart and 12 inches apart, uh, the, the, the dual slips. Uh, you surround it with newsprint, and those, that's actually six layers of newsprint, uh, and wet that down thoroughly. Do not do this on a windy day, <laughs> because you'll have a lot of trouble. I remember one year when we did. And there's a close-up just showing that we actually put a newspaper in between the slips as well. Okay, then on top of the newsprint, you are also going to put a two to three inch layer of some other kind of mulch. Uh, this is a hardwood mulch uh, and uh, it's very inexpensive to get. Uh, other, another, other things that you can use uh, is hay, for example. You just need to make sure there are no herbicides in that. Uh, wood chips work okay if the pieces are small, but it's kind of hard to keep them on the side, on the side of that hill uh, if the pieces are big. You can use leaves, dry leaves, uh, if you know the source, um, because there some people, you know, use herbicides. They spray their trees, they spray their lawn. You can use cardboard. Uh, you don't need, you only need one layer of cardboard. You can lay that on the sides. You wouldn't be able to put it in between the slips. But as I said, we did that as just an extra, an extra thing to do. And any dry organic material will work for this purpose. Uh, because what you're trying to do is suppress weeds and stop additional root formation. You have roots on the slips that you planted but the sweet potato itself is a root and the vines will grow very long and they will root wherever they touch the soil. So what you're trying to do is keep, keep those vines up above the soil because you want uh, fewer uh, storage roots, which are large. Uh, if you form too many roots, uh, that reduces the size of the pot potatoes that you get. You'll get a lot of them, but they'll be small and keep keeping the roots controlled with the mulch will produce larger roots, and that means potatoes. Uh, mulch provides also a habitat for weevil attacking predators, and weevils are one of the things that are a problem often with the sweet potatoes. <clears throat> I did not have a lot of weevil problems when I planted them the way you were shown. This shows you the roots. Uh, and no, these are not slips that you're looking at. This is part of a vine. And you'll see that the roots are, are coming out at the nodes. And you'll also see that on a couple of these roots, potatoes, that is the storage roots, the large roots are forming. Um, there are actually three different kinds of roots on a sweet potato. Uh, there are the storage roots, which is what we're working for. 
And then there are the smaller roots that are about the size of a, of a pencil, uh, which uh, bring nutrition and so forth and help the plant grow and help the potatoes form. And then there's the fibrous roots, the very tiny ones uh, on the other roots. So we're working for storage roots, not all those others. <clears throat> so you'll notice here, these, not only did they get a lot of sweet potatoes right where they planted the slip to begin with, but they're a good size. So, and, the, and you'll notice that the roots look, or the, uh, the stems look very clean, like they haven't rooted along the way. This is what you're looking for. You want fewer miscellaneous roots. You want the storage roots. <clears throat> now, after you have planted the slips, you wanna keep the bed moist for it's the first three to four weeks. That's when the, the roots are growing. Uh, and the, the slips are getting happy in their new, in their new bed. Uh, and during that time, they, it needs to be moist. You also want to keep the bed free of weeds, so there isn't a lot of competition for the, the nutrition that's there. And then when the vines cover the garden bed, or start to cover it, when, they, when you have some nice long vines forming from those slips, uh, you can reduce the watering. It doesn't have, it just has to be moist. It doesn't have to be wet. You don't have to, <clears throat> and if it rains once in a while, that's probably all, all it's going to need. And then you want to stop watering three to four weeks before you plan on harvesting because it's much easier and better for the potatoes if you can harvest when it's a little moist, even a little dry. Uh, trying to harvest wet potatoes out of a muddy bed is really not a good idea. The weevils can be a problem, and there's a picture of one there, uh, in case you don't know what they look like. They hide pretty well, so I don't think I've ever seen one, <clears throat> but I have seen some of the holes they've made in my potatoes. Uh, in order to reduce the weevil problem, you really need to rotate your crops, uh, like on a three-year rotation schedule. Uh, this is this is true for a lot of crops, and it's very very uh, important for the sweet potatoes. If you're doing it in your backyard, uh, you you really need to figure out some way to put them somewhere else next year. Uh, mice and possums can also uh, dig them up. I know uh, I did not have any sweet potatoes last year in my backyard because I had a possum who really liked them. This shows you what the bed probably will look like when you're ready to harvest. Uh, you'll see some dry leaves and you'll, uh, you'll a lot mature. The whole bed will be covered with vines. Uh, so that means it's, you're ready to go. So harvesting is kind of fun. <clears throat> and really the best way, when you're, when you're working with kids at a school, this isn't easy to do. But a good thing to do is to cut the vines uh, uh, at the place where you have rooted the slips, because you should still be able to find out where that is or locate that. Uh, leave an inch or two of the plant, because you want to know where those slips were planted, because that's where the potatoes will be. Uh, and then carefully remove the soil from around that particular area. If you damage the potato, this is going to reduce the storage potential. Uh, if they're Damage the um, covering on the potato, the peel uh, is damaged or cut uh, or bruised. Uh, it really is not a good thing and they often will turn black. Uh, I usually wash them carefully. I just take a big uh, uh, wash, wash pan, uh, fill it full of water and just throw them in or carefully place them in, in the water uh, while I'm harvesting the rest of them and then I take them out of there and put them in another pan of clean water and then I take them out and let them dry two to three hours outside in the garden if you can uh, out in the out in the fresh air is really a good a good thing to do uh, so if you're if you're harvesting it's a good idea to harvest them you know in the morning uh, so that you can let them dry for a few hours <clears throat> and then uh, put them away somewhere you can see that kids really love uh, sweet potato hunts treasure hunts uh, and uh, they're always kind of amazed <clears throat> because they have no idea they're going to be big potatoes like this. Uh, they've probably maybe seen them in the grocery store, but uh, it's delightful and they love it. <clears throat> this, is a, uh, this is a picture of the Beauregard. 
which is a really nice potato and I've enjoyed growing that. <coughs> the potatoes really should be cured for at least two weeks, maybe 10 days to 14 days, because the sugars, once they're pulled off the vine and out of the bed, the sugars start developing and they aren't really sweet potato sweet uh, until, uh, until they've uh, rested and cured for a couple weeks. And that should be done in a dark, warm, humid room. Uh, and they, you can just put them in boxes, uh, spread them out on newspaper or something like that. And then once they've been cured, uh, you can store them in a cool, dark room. And 55 to 60, if you can find that uh, in, in the summertime in Houston, or we're talking about maybe September, October, right around there, you can leave them in the ground. Until, you can actually leave them in the ground until Thanksgiving, if that's what you want to do. Uh, but the problem is that in the, in the bed, they're more likely to be attacked by pests if they're left in the garden too long. You can sort them, and if there are any ones that don't look like they're going to make it, because some of them will have bruises, there's no, no way you can uh, dig sweet potatoes without damaging one or two of them. Uh, but you can sort them out, and the ones that look like they might have a little damage on them, you can eat those first. That would be the best thing to do. Wrap, wrap them in paper or put them in canvas bags uh, just so that they're, they're cool and, um, and they'll store. Do not store them under your kitchen sink. That's not a good place to put them. Uh, <clears throat> and there's some, some hints that might help you along the way a little bit. Uh, vines growing in the garden can actually be used to produce more slips. In other words, if you just got a few because a friend ordered some slips and gave you five or six of them, you can plant them and let them start growing. And then you can clip off the tip and plant those uh, because you can actually just take those vines and put them right in the ground without roots and they will grow. Uh, it's kind of amazing, <clears throat> but it's fun. Uh, long stringy roots, that is the, the ones that you aren't looking for, the ones that form at the nodes, but don't form sweet potatoes, uh, it's caused usually by too much water, and that's usually because of poor drainage. Maybe we've had way too much rain this summer, and also not enough sun. So make sure that your sweet potato bed is in the sun, uh, where, it's, where it's getting as much as, as it can, because sweet potatoes don't have to be pampered. They like the sun. Um, too much water can also cause splitting. Sometimes people will say that you know, they dug up their sweet potatoes and some of them were split. Well, that's usually because they've um, gotten a really heavy rain and they just got too, too much water. And again, if you rotate the sweet potatoes on a three-year schedule, that will help prevent any diseases that might come along. Uh, some of the resources, uh, you may know that Dr. Bob Randall has uh, a new book called Fear on food gardening for Houston, uh, and that is an excellent source. There's a very nice, long covery of uh, sweet potato uh, information uh, for you in there. And you can always go to urbanharvest.org. You can ask questions. Uh, you can look for information. And of course, I'm available online. Uh, if you have a question, I always answer questions that I get on email. So feel free to do that because um, I've grown a lot of sweet potatoes. I'd be happy to help you. Thank you for your attention. Happy growing. <laughs>